The iPhone 14 is here, and we got a little more than we bargained for this year. So let's talk about the best and the most important innovations in this year's new iPhone models. Let's also talk about what we didn't get and what we're still waiting for. I'm Jason Heiner. Welcome to ZDNet. Let's do this. We should remind ourselves that despite the name of the product, iPhone 14, this is actually the 16th generation iPhone. And over the past decade and a half, no product has had a bigger impact on the world than this one. So every time there's a new version, it means something. The innovations in here will impact millions of lives and will have an impact on lots of other products and not just phones. So let's get into it. What are the top innovations this year? Here are the three biggest hits. Number one, emergency safety features. Apple introduced both car crash detection and emergency SOS via satellite. The crash detection feature uses a mix of sensors to detect when you've had a collision and pops up a message to see if you need help. If you don't respond, then it automatically calls emergency services on your behalf. Emergency SOS is for when you're out of range of cell towers in a remote area and it guides you to point your phone at a satellite and select a pre-written emergency prompt to send for help. Hopefully you would never need to use either of these features, but if you did, they could certainly make a huge impact on your life and the people who care about you. It's another indication of how much these devices are becoming an even more critical part of our lives. Number two, a new interface for notifications. In the Pro models, Apple has replaced the much maligned, although distinctive, notch with a pill-shaped black oval. They also named it the Dynamic Island. While both of those choices drew some initial laughs, it turns out that Apple's actually done something really interesting with this. It's turned this previously useless area into a new user interface element to handle notifications, multitasking, and live updates. When you're listening to a song or podcast and you switch to another application, for example, the cover art turns into a small circle anchored on this black oval. If you then start a timer, it pops into a separate circle on the other side of the oval. And there are a whole host of new animations that give you immediate confirmation indicators for face ID, connecting AirPods, turning on the silent switch, engaging wireless charging, and a lot more. And the live activities functionality here is expected to get a lot more useful as third-party apps start using it to show live sports scores, the status of your ride-sharing ride, delivery updates, workout timers, and other uses no one's even imagined yet. Number three, pro-level camera upgrades. It's clear that Apple is putting a lot of energy and some of its best minds to work in making these cameras better every year. And this year we got some very promising upgrades. First, the main sensor jumps from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels. Now, most of the time, the software will do what's called pixel binning and squeeze those 48 megapixels down to 12 to create a richer, sharper, and more detailed photo. But pros can also shoot in RAW to get all 48 megapixels and then use software like Adobe Lightroom to dig into the details. The front camera also gets a nice upgrade with stronger low light capabilities and now autofocus, which should be especially helpful for group selfies. The ultra-wide camera gets an upgrade that promises to make its low-light capability better, which had been a key weakness. And then there's the video cameras. Last year's killer feature, Cinematic Mode, gets an upgrade to 4K and lets you shoot in 24 frames per second, the gold standard for movie making. And new this year, the video camera also gets Action Mode, which is essentially next-level stabilization that's aimed at creating such smooth movements that you don't need a gimbal. We'll be testing that feature for sure. All right, those are the three biggest hits in terms of innovation. Let's talk about the three biggest misses. Number one, no 10x optical zoom. As a camera, the iPhone keeps getting better and better and better. And this year saw more leaps ahead, but it's still missing something big. I've talked about the fact that since 2010, I've carried an iPhone as my personal phone and an Android as my work phone. In the last several years, there's one type of shot where I don't pull out the iPhone, but always pull out the Android. In 2022, that's specifically the Samsung S22 Ultra. 
And that shot is anything that's more than 10 or 20 feet away, which is all the iPhone can handle with its 3x optical zoom. The S22's 10x optical zoom can capture impressively sharp images on subjects that are up to 50 to 60 feet away. If these were lenses on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, the iPhone 14's 3x zoom would be about a 77 millimeter lens, while the S22's 10x zoom would be about a 230 millimeter lens. Samsung will release its fourth generation 10x optical zoom in the next six months. Meanwhile, we'll have to wait at least another year before we'll see the equivalent on an iPhone. Number two, removing the physical SIM card. If you buy an iPhone in the US, it will no longer include a SIM tray or a physical SIM card. All US iPhone models are now eSIM only. And while this has some benefits for ease of activation, ease of switching carriers, and ease of adding secondary numbers, it also has some big drawbacks. First and foremost is privacy. With a physical SIM, there are still cases where you can be anonymous and difficult to track. With an eSIM, that's much harder. This eSIM limitation can also make it more difficult to travel internationally to countries like China that don't support eSIM, and it can limit your access to low-cost wireless carriers like Ting, which doesn't yet support eSIM. That's why Apple will still have physical SIM cards in the international versions of the iPhone. And while expanding support for eSIM makes a lot of sense, perhaps even moving toward making it the default option, it's not a very consumer-friendly thing to remove the physical SIM card altogether. Number three, it still needs a case. The use of stainless steel on the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max continue to make it one of the heaviest phones on the market. If Apple used a similar titanium to what's in the Apple Watch Ultra, which is much lighter than I expected, then the iPhone 14 Pro models would be much easier to handle. But the current heaviness combined with the slipperiness of the steel bands around the edges make it very easy to slide out of your hand. Most people will still need to put a case on this phone. And it will still be true that many of the ugliest cases in the world will end up on some of the most beautifully designed devices in the world. So those are the biggest innovation hits and misses of the iPhone 14. There are more, such as the powerful new display that includes always on and the lack of USB-C. You can read more about those in our full article. ZDNet will continue putting all the models through lots of different real world uses in the weeks and months ahead. We'll have reviews, how-tos, comparisons, and deep dives on specific features. Stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.